and research at, at OT. And our final indicators this afternoon are going to focus on psychological and subjective well-being. And in recent years, there's been an outpouring of research on subjective well-being and growing calls for some variant of happiness to be adopted as a policy goal, both in developing and in developed countries. The appeal of subjective well-being as an indicator is manifold. It's unidimensional, easy to capture, and emotionally appealing. However, we argue that, well, we show that a focus on happiness in particular and on subjective and psychological well-being more generally as aims of government policy have been, have been subject to strong critiques. These include the nature of happiness as a fleeting, transient emotion, a potential conflict with other important values. The logic for privileging happiness isn't always clear. The potential undermining of democratic process by favoring the unhappy and outcome over process and an implicit acceptance of democratic of adaptive preferences. So we argue that these objections caution against policy which seeks to maximize psychological and subjective well-being. At the same time, we argue that these states have intrinsic and instrumental value. They are a key component of the other dimensions we propose, as well as, a, as, well as an end result of their attainments. In terms of subjective, sorry, so we, we'd like to show that we, we believe that an understanding of these states can provide a richer understanding of human experience by casting light on what people value and particularly non-material criteria. So in this proposal, we argue for a deeper perspective than a focus on happiness. And our indicators emphasize particularly meaning and related variables. We propose measuring four psychological indicators and three subjective indicators. To measure psychological well-being, we focus first on the perception of having meaning in life, as defined by the respondents, and secondly, on the ability to strive towards fulfill fulfillment of this meaning. Here we draw upon self-determination theory, which identifies three basic psychological needs associated with, with goal identification and pursuit, and therefore with optimal functioning. In particular, we look at autonomy or self-determination, uh, we look at competence, defined as the propensity to have an effect on the environment, as well as to attain valued outcomes within it. And we look at relatedness, or the desire to feel connected to others. In terms of subjective indicators, we argue for the separate measurement of life satisfaction and of happiness. Presently, these two indicators are often conflated, but evidence suggests that they're conceptually different and that the correlation between them is often low. Life satisfaction is a global measure which theoretically incorporates all the domains that the respondent values. However, when asked in isolation from domain specific satisfaction, the measure does not provide information on what aspect the respondent values and to what extent. As a consequence, we propose, we propose that the satisfaction measure consider both life satisfaction overall and also several domains that emerge as important in philosophical, psychological, and participatory studies. Uh, in particular, we advocate a focus on food and housing, on consumption, on health, on work, on physical safety, on relations with friends and family, on education, on attachment to one's community, on the ability to actively help others, and on well-being from spiritual, religious, or philosophical beliefs. Thirdly, we turn to what we might be able to do with this data and identify four possibilities in the first instance. First, we could identify groups that are vulnerable with respect to these indicators. Some work suggests some consistent socio-demographic correlates of subjective and psychological indicators. Though more work is needed to eliminate these relationships, the underlying mechanisms and the direction of causality. On this last point, panel data would be particularly helpful. Second, it would allow us to explore intergroup relationships um, amongst the subjective and the psychological indicators. Meaning, satisfaction, and happiness appear to be distinct concepts, but positively associated. The form and the extent of the association between them requires further study. Third, it would allow us to explore relationships between psychological and subjective indicators and objective characteristics, particularly those that are associated with poverty. The available indicators or the available data suggest that objective conditions and subjective indicators do not always correlate, 
raising the need to be aware of the divergence and the trends over time. Further, little is known about how psychological states relate to objective indicators. Finally, this data would enable a richer appraisal of policy options, both at a micro level and at a macro level. An understanding of subjective perceptions would shed light on what people value. Also, the limited empirical evidence shows some systematic differences in the way people perceive various macroeconomic conditions. And an understanding of these, these uh, systematic differences could better inform policy making. Thank you.